As we find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic, the likes of which we have never seen before, tonight we're going to dig a little deeper into what we can all do right now. The entire globe is trying to come to terms with this new way of life. And as we just heard moments ago, residents in Los Angeles County must now do the same. The L.A. mayor there announcing a sweeping safer at home order requiring tens of millions of America's second largest city to stay home with few exceptions. He said the order is because human life is precious. And at this point, this is way beyond hot spots on a map. Here in the U.S., the number of confirmed cases continues to rise with more than 13,000 testing positive. And here's what's being done. Large sporting venues like City Field here in New York transformed into makeshift triage zones in anticipation of a crush of COVID-19 patients. It is an effort from coast to coast. This soccer complex in Washington state also turned into a temporary hospital. The entire nation of Italy is on the brink and on lockdown as the death toll now surpasses that of China. And the defiant spring breakers on America's beaches initially refusing to stay indoors. Now they have no choice but to get off Florida beaches, forced to come to terms with this crisis, as so many of us are right now. And our Whit Johnson leads us off with the very latest. With the number of infections in the U.S. soaring, and New York alone by 3,000 in just the last 24 hours, the mayor giving this new warning. But the federal government does not do all in its power immediately. There will be people who die who didn't need to die. Adding this is going to be one of the most difficult moments in the city's history. This as the White House is making an ambitious promise to fast track medical treatments for patients with COVID-19. It's shown very encouraging, very, very encouraging early results. And we're going to be able to make that drug available almost immediately. President Trump touting the malaria drug chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, which doctors say have already delivered promising results in China to alleviate symptoms. But right now, the FDA is still studying the drug. I think it could be a game changer and maybe not. And maybe not, but I think it could be based on what I see. The White House says another therapy for Ebola is already being tested on Americans with COVID-19. But it's still unclear when any of these treatments will be widely available or if they're effective. This as doctors and nurses have been sounding the alarm for days, saying they're running out of critical supplies. The CDC even recommending using homemade masks like a bandana or scarf as a last resort. Nurses are working with inadequate protections, and that ranges from head coverings, respirators, eye shields, uh, appropriate gowns. But Vice President Pence claiming a company that makes those vital M95 masks is ramping up production to 35 million per month, adding that the government has now identified tens of thousands of ventilators as well. ER Dr. Steven Anderson telling us they need ventilators in Auburn, Washington. Well, we need ventilators. I have ventilators this morning, but the hospital up the street from me is out of ventilators at the moment. The growing pandemic now revealing the risk for young people may be worse than previously thought. New numbers from the CDC showing nearly 40 percent of American patients hospitalized for COVID-19 were between the ages of 20 and 54. Still, thousands of college students have been descending on Florida beaches. But 29-year-old Tarek Suleiman wants young people to realize just how dangerous it is. He's sick with the virus and has pneumonia, unable to breathe. I just want to say that um, it can come to anyone, and it can also be severe for a lot of young people. The governor of New York today leaning on his 22-year-old daughter. What is the one line I used to say? Risk reward. <laughs> yeah. To urge young people to heed the warnings. These pictures of young people on beaches, these videos of young people saying, this is my spring break, you know, I'm out to party, this is my time to party. This is so unintelligent and reckless. In New York, Governor Cuomo now tightening the restrictions on businesses, mandating that 75% of their workers must stay home. And in nearby Freehold, New Jersey, an unimaginable loss for the Fusco family. Today, the fourth member of the tight-knit family dying, all within days of each other. Three others hospitalized, nearly 20 family members now on quarantine. Daughter Bridget telling People Magazine, I am numb. I don't believe what is going on. And Whit Johnson joins us now. Whit, such a tragedy for that family. And some of them are still in the hospital. 
That's right, Lindsay. At least three of them still in the hospital. We know that 20 or more are now on self quarantine as a result, and that number could go up depending on how many people they've had contact with. But this is really an unthinkable example of just how contagious this virus can be, especially in large groups. The New York Times is also reporting that matriarch died while on a ventilator in the hospital, never knowing that her two oldest children had already passed. Really Lindsay. unable to mourn properly together uh, the deaths of their, their relatives and loved ones. Whit Johnson, thank you for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.